my very first fight. This is 2002 in Western Canadian MMA history. It wasn't even MMA, it was no holds barred. There were no universal rules. Sometimes there would be three minute rounds, sometimes there's five minute rounds, sometimes there's knees to the head, sometimes there's no knees, sometimes there's elbows, sometimes there's not. It's really like all over the place. Regardless, I'm at high school, because I'm like 17 years old. I'm in high school, I had just gotten in a fight uh, the week before because some dude wanted to fight me, whatever. So we scrapped it out. I kind of the better of them so I'm kind of like yeah I'm a badass my buddy comes up he's like yo there's these guys and they're fighting no holds barred they train and then they go to this place in Lethbridge and there's this ring that they put in a bar and you can just fight and it's legal you won't go to jail it's awesome he's like you want to come I'm like yeah for sure let's go so I started training with these guys after about two months yes yeah two months I start I, they asked me if I wanted to fight and I'm like yeah let's go right that's why I was doing it I wasn't training Training to like be a great martial artist. I was just training to fight and not go to jail. So they offered me this fight and I'm like, sure, let's do it. The card is Lethbridge Roadhouse Rumble. Now the Rumble is actually still to this day operating and Lee Mean, one of the godfathers of MMA is running it. He's also fighting still at like 52, which is nuts because I've retired and he's still fighting, kind of crazy. Regardless, so we go to Lethbridge. I'm with this crazy friend that I used to have, not friends anymore. He's fighting too, he's on the cards, so we're like kind of best friends and we go to high school together, same high school, and, uh, and we go on this fight trip to Lethbridge. We all show up at the weigh-in, nobody cuts weight. We didn't know what weight cutting was, we didn't really realize it was a thing, Nobody cut weight, not even our opponents. No one cut weight. We just showed up and jumped on the scale and then Lee like matched us up. Like you're gonna fight this guy, you're gonna fight this guy. So I found out who I was fighting at the weigh-in. My coach Bill Mahood uh, also had a fight. He was fighting Nick Ring which if you guys know who Nick the Scorpion Ring is, that's a pretty epic battle for 2002 Western Canada, Bill Mahood, Nick Ring, sick fight. Anyways, they tell me that I'm gonna fight this guy named Eric Harvey. Now, Eric Harvey is about 32 years old. I'm 17, I'm in grade 12. But when I see the dude, he's kind of skinny fat and like balding, so I'm like, yeah, I could take this guy, let's go. James gets matched up with this other dude, this wrestler guy, Chris, Chris Hansen, no, Chris Aid, Chris Aid, yeah, Chris Aid. You got matched up with Chris Aid. So me and my buddy, we're gonna go and fight these two dudes. I'm up first and I'm like just in the back room. I'm not warming up. <laughs> we didn't really warm up. Like I said, we didn't know anything. So like Bill Mahood would be like, yeah, this is our warm up. Ah, ah, okay, let's go. So I like literally just like did that and then paced around a bunch and like yelled stuff. Just, I was like, just trying to work myself up into some sort of a state where I was no longer terrified. Because I was freaking terrified, right? So I'm like riling myself up, right? Making myself all angry. This type of behavior led to my nickname being Ragin' Cajun, right? I was some raging out in the back room and Bill Mahood's like, whose cage is it? It's my cage! Whose cage is it? It's my cage! Ah! Like just nuts, right? So I work myself up into this frenzy and I like storm out to the ring and I'm like, yeah. I jump over the ropes and I'm yeah. like getting all rowdy and then I see my opponent come out and I'm like mean mugging him and I'm like pointing at him and just like really like over the top kind of WWE swag, but that was me, right? I was 17 years old. I've been watching WWE for a long time and like that's what I did, right? So anyways, fight starts, right? We're looking at each other, fight starts, bell rings. Now, I didn't have much strategy. I, I knew how to throw one twos and like a low kick, which I didn't even really know how to throw one twos and a low kick with my current knowledge of things, but I thought I knew how to do that. Anyway, and I knew like arm bar and, and like guillotine and, and triangle. I knew what like mount and guard were, but I, I honestly, I don't even think I knew what half guard was. Like, I don't, I don't think I knew what that was. I knew what a rear naked choke was. I knew how to, how to do that, but that's about it. Like, we really had very, very little knowledge. Okay, so fight starts and I'm bouncing around. I'm not like, like in and out bouncing around, like literally like, <laughs> like a pogo stick. I swear I put this on YouTube somewhere. So you may be able to find it if you Google Kajan Johnson Roadhouse Rumble. It might be there somewhere, I don't know. But regardless, I'm like bouncing up and down like this. And then I throw this one shot. I throw a low kick, boom. 
and then I throw a right hand after. Bang! And it actually landed. I didn't know anything, but I had kind of created this movement a long time ago in a street fight. We made a video about it. So I go back and I, I throw this low kick and I bang, I hit him with the right hand. And homie just drops. Like I had just worked this all up in my head like it was gonna be this crazy epic battle that I was prepped for. And I throw a low kick and a right hand. First two strikes I threw in the whole fight. Bang. He dropped like one of those toys where you press the button and they like crumple. He just like crumpled to the ground and I jumped on him. I threw a couple more shots and that was it. It was over. I knocked a guy out in 24 seconds. And then I thought I was king shit. I thought I was like the greatest fighter that had ever lived. I thought I had like dynamite in my hand and then proceeded to go on through my career and not knock another person out for maybe like 15 or 16 more fights. <laughs> so I then had to actually figure out how to fight. But I knocked this guy out and then it's a free for all. Now, unfortunately I'm still 17, so I'm not allowed to like stay in the bar and actually party, but me and my crazy friend James, we go back to the hotel and we start wiling out. So I don't know if you guys remember Jackass, but like we were obsessed with Jackass and we kind of tried to be Jackass. So we had bought like animal print male thongs just for this specific occasion. I know that sounds kind of weird, but whatever, we're weird, right? So we like go back to the hotel, put on these thongs, run through the rest of the whole hotel in our thongs and like get up on the like front desk and are like dancing on it. Like, well, the woman at the front desk is like just mortified. Like what the hell are these psychos doing? And then we go back to the room. We like put on regular clothes again and we're like drinking and wrestling. And we end up getting kicked out of the hotel at like three o'clock in the morning in Lethbridge where it's like minus 30 at three o'clock in the morning. And we have nowhere to go. Now I'm 17, so like my dad drove me to, to Lethbridge. So they, I gotta wait until they wake up. I'm not gonna just go knock on their door at like three o'clock in the morning like, we got kicked out. So I'm like sitting, me and James are sitting in Humpties, drinking coffee, trying not to pass out because they'll kick us out. And if they kick us out of Humpties, like we're like stranded in Lethbridge at three in the morning. Like, it was not a good time. It was not a good time, but it was also at the same time, like a really, really epic good time. And then fights over, night goes by. Eventually we end up going to my dad's hotel and like letting him letting us in. And then we drive back to, to, to Prince George and we go back to school. And now I wasn't the toughest guy in the school by any means. I was like kind of small and skinny. People knew I was kind of scrappy because I would fight, and but they, they weren't scared of me. So they didn't think I was gonna win this fight to begin with. And James, James, James was like the tough guy of the school, probably because he was like 21 and still in high school. Just a little strange. But even as a 21 year old, he was had a pretty good reputation in the town of being like a tough guy. He was fighting for a long time. I had heard about the guy for a long time ever before I met him. So regardless, they thought he was gonna win for sure. He's, he's James Hansen, he's gonna win. And I'm gonna lose. Cause like, who's this kitchen kid, right? Skinny black kid with dreads. That kind of flipped on its head though. Cause I knocked the guy out in 24 seconds. And then James loses the decision to this wrestler kid, Chris A. So we go back to school and the reaction Reaction to how I had done in this fight was something I had never experienced. If I wasn't already like hooked on fighting after knocking this guy out in 24 seconds, the reaction that I got from everyone in the school on coming back victorious when James had just lost, like it was like my status level went from like a medium mid-grade level to like boom, elite level status, which didn't last very long, but it was incredibly amazing for me and my 17 year old self. So that really anchored it in like, you're just gonna do this now. So my parents are trying to get me to go to university and everything. I didn't, I had just fought my entire life. And now I'm here like 20 years later and I've got these young guys that I'm coming up and they're having their first fights. And it's really cool to see the development of the sport and the development of myself, right? And how different I am now because of the path that I've taken, the path less traveled, but some of the best paths in life are the least traveled. So if you are looking to fight, if you think that it's a possibility for your life and everybody says that you can't do it, they don't know shit, you can do it. You wanna do it, 
come down to TriStar Gym West Coast, 7759 Edmond Street, Burnaby, BC. I'll see you there.